Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. Tom, Ter- uh, Ter- help me out, Teramina, correct? Correct. Yeah, it only took me about 15 times. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, now a regular contributor on The Price of Business, and uh, I love the work that he does. Uh, he's with ItWasRocketScience.com. We're in the process of setting up uh, several interviews and articles that he's going to be doing at PriceOfBusiness.com and also over at USDailyReview.com. And we're delighted to have him a part of our program. And uh, let's talk a little bit both about what you do uh, at ItWasRocketScientist.com. Kind of give us your story and then uh, some of the uh, interviews that we've got in the works in the future, some of the type of guests that we're going to be working on getting on the program. Top of the morning to you, Kevin, and uh, delighted to be with you. Always. Actually, I'm honored to be with you. <clears throat> your uh, your show is uh, is exemplar of what we need more of on our on our radio waves of people getting involved in business instead of being spectators. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a former rocket scientist. I spent 14 years at Mission Control down there in Clear Lake, and uh, I was a Quality control engineer, one of the first. I was there for Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem. And I spent the last 40-plus years uh, recreating what I call the Apollo business model, which is how did we get to the moon in seven years? What, did, what was the dynamic, the business dynamic, that brought all of these people together, the machine, two-man machine shops and IBM and NASA and the military to, to enable us to land men on the moon, create an impossible dream, as it were. And so the uh, it was rocket science these days is uh, endowing the legacy to the new generation of leaders. How did we do that, and how can you do that today in your own business? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting about that, because, you know, uh, the Russians got there first, and we lived in a time where that mattered to Americans, you know, and that was important. And the Russians really hadn't beaten us anywhere yet up to that point. And I think that, uh, you know, our, our, our now decades of we're just like every other culture, we're just like every other nation, has really taken away that fire in the belly of Americans that led us to being not only um, an inspiration, uh, but also a, you know, thought leader, also being trendsetters. I mean, I don't know, I, I can't even articulate it, but I, I think it, you know exactly what I mean. I do, and we could probably do a two-hour segment on just that topic. And that really has uh, caused me to make this this uh, legacy transition and, and firing up our country again. The only It's the only thing left on my bucket list. I really, really am passionate, and I'm just uh, blessed to be surrounded by uh, a group of folks who, who are have of my ilk and share the same passion. And a lot of them are, are former astronauts. And we're we're not going to go down we're not going to go down in flames. We're going to uh, do everything humanly possible to communicate to our country and to our leaders what it is that made us great in the '60s and '70s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so, where did we lose that? Where did we lose it? We lost yeah. it with entitlements. Um, something I call the direct deposit employee. I, I, it's not my term. I borrowed it somebody, but the direct deposit employee. If you listen. Listen to that term and think about it. There isn't even a risk and reward any longer for doing your job. Your paycheck is automatically deposited. You, you've got it pre-spent. So when you show up at work, what's the incentive? What's the incentive to do things correctly? What's the incentive to, to really achieve your greatest success? There, there almost isn't one. You can't get fired anymore. That's What's, there's something fundamentally wrong with our value system, Kevin. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's talk a little bit about Elon Musk. Uh, he is amazing. I think he's brilliant. Uh, he's having a big impact very close to where you're located. But, boy, he had a tough uh, last 30 days, hasn't he? He has. Uh, it's, it's interesting that you, he's from South Africa, and, and he's now exemplifying the American entrepreneur, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely he is. Uh, I think he's much more risk-oriented and uh, open to uh, taking challenges that a lot of Americans aren't. And he's incredibly honest, which has hit his stock every time he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I got phone calls and emails last week about throttle that guy back. He's killing my portfolio. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, in terms of, I mean, he had, uh, let's see, the, the rocket, the rocket, uh, thank God it was a test rocket. Uh, it exploded. And people don't understand, but that, you know, everywhere we've had test rockets, that kind of thing has happened. Every country, every, what, you know, business model that's tried to pursue it, that's happened, correct? Yeah, it's called foreseeable risk. If you're a risk taker, like he is, you sit down with your, your top advisors and you go through every potential risk of what's about to occur, such as a rocket launch, and you say, okay, we've, we've looked at every parameter, we've simulated it, let's go for it, let's light the thing off. And when it explodes, uh, if I were in the, the briefing room afterward, I would imagine the discussion was something like, okay, which parameters failed and why didn't we see it? Uh, not, oh my gosh, the world's coming to an end. Yeah. Yep. Exactly right. And um, so, uh, tell me what you know what what you see going on in terms of uh, Elon Musk's uh, impact. You know, he's he's in- incredible in terms of you know here here's the plans. This is how I made uh, the Tesla. Uh, go ahead and reuse them yourself. I mean, the guy is really kind of uh, quirky as well. Well, he is. But if you think about the term quirky, that's exactly what we did uh, during Apollo. We. The, the technology we invented was was open to anyone to use, and that's his key to the future success of this world. That's the key to his his uh, incredible personal and, and corporate accomplishments. When you when you try and worry about competition, uh, you don't get things done. When I was doing consulting work at Dell Computer, I owned all of my intellectual property. They said, "Sure, you publish it, please." Uh, we want to share it with everybody. You know, by the way, by the time it gets published, we'll be off on our next generation. So I, I believe with Elon is the, the the next Michael Dell, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and what he's doing with the SpaceX program, and think about the fact that he's building a five million square foot facility in our tiny little county. It's uh, life as I know it changed last Thursday. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, what, what's the time frame on that facility, by the way? It's several years, but uh, they've already got the pad cleared, and uh, of course the, uh, the entire county is in turmoil as, as to how we're going to deal with another 10,000 employees in our county with 5,000 permanent citizens. So it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. <laughs> hey, I, I suggest you buy a mobile home <laughs> and sell your house, you know, uh, really fast because you're going to make a bunch of money if you own your home right now. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations on that. It'll be fun to watch that. Well, we'll have to give you uh, get you to give us some updates on what's happening. In fact, that'd be kind of an interesting series of stories at usdailyreview.com if you'd be interested in contributing on that. I, that would be kind of cool. Well, I'd be happy to because uh, we, in fact, are starting something called the Center for Business Excellence, which which does tail exact dovetails exactly into your question about uh, what's happening to our country. We're putting together this consortium of very senior, uh, very senior um, old old gray hairs like me, who want to endow our our, our knowledge and experience to the next generation of leaders. And it just so happened that this was underway when this announcement came. And we will have some really exciting stuff to talk about on how to build a knowledge center and a knowledge transfer center. And my model for demand pull, as I call it, we interview uh, companies and find out what their needs are and then find the best-in-class services to help them fulfill those needs. What a, what a concept. I love it. Tom, I look forward to those articles over at uh, usdailyreview.com. We'll talk about that. I'll send you an email uh, to get that rolling. And uh, also, I look forward to our future interviews. We're going to have a lot of fun. Me too, Kevin. Yeah. You can find Tom over at uh, thepriceofbusiness.com. Click the contributor section. And also at itwasrocketscience.com. It sure was. And we're hoping to restore a renaissance of rocket science in the way we look at business here in the future. I'm Kevin Price. More after this on The Price of Business.